Why, 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 you're getting nervous, man. Today's video sponsor is GVG Mall. Bringing you all the software deals you need, like Windows 10, Windows 11, Office 2021 with a new Windows 11 design, and even Windows Server 2022. For all of these, you can use my SKG discount code for 25% off, getting a Windows 10 serial key for only $16. Then use the key on your Windows settings, and you'll have an activated system. Hello guys, it's Shinkin Plays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel. As for today's video, just grab some popcorn or something to eat because it is gonna be a long video, as this is the How to Adrenaline 2023. Yes, sir! In this video, I'm gonna try to show you what every single option and setting does in the AMD Adrenaline settings that are now not called Radeon settings, they're just AMD Adrenaline settings, so AMD Adrenaline software. So firstly, we start with the home menu, where we have several things. We have the last played game, where I actually have none, because... Well, well, because I just installed um, the 23.3.1 drivers because they actually have some new things, as you can see here, 23.3.1, because they have some new things that I that I actually had to include in the in the 2023 video. Otherwise, it it wouldn't really make sense as this video is a 2023 version. So I am not only including the the 7000 series the cards, okay, the 7900 XTX, as I'm also including the most recent drivers in order to have all the settings shown and explained, okay? So we have the last played. Once again, you have your recent games where it will actually show the games that you played, how many hours, how many time, the average FPS numbers and so on. Sorry that I don't have these here, but you can actually see them in my 2022 video, so you're fine. You have the AMD Link status where you can actually get AMD Link, manage devices, um... This, the AMD Link is actually an interesting feature where you can download this software for your smartphone as well and your smartphone will actually serve, for example, uh, as a matrix, uh, as a matrix monitor, okay? So your smartphone can actually be showing uh, you the, the GPU temperatures, the CPU temperatures uh, and many other data that you can see on your smartphone or you can actually play games so you can stream games from your computer to your smartphone. So if you want to, if you want to play the, your games in your living room, in your smartphone, just relaxing a bit, just leave your computer on, use AMD Link and you can actually play the games uh, on your smartphone, okay? That's what AMD Link does, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, okay? Then we have some tutorials if you want to. You have the media and capture, okay? So if you have any media on the video slash radiant relief slash something, uh, it will appear here. So you can take a screenshot, record a video, uh, inst instant replay and instant GIF, okay? We have several other menus here and uh, on the top as well. So we have the gaming, the record and stream and the performance ones, but... Uh, I will actually go into the settings here first, as some of these menus, the gaming record and stream and performance, won't make much sense without actually showing you the settings menu first, okay? Uh, so, just on the right side, we have the browser as well, if you want to. We have the AMD software survey, I believe it's pronounced survey. We have the notifications, we have the settings, and we have the option to put the... Um, the menu per se, the MD settings on the sidebar, okay? So if as soon as you click it, it will appear, as you can see here, as a sidebar, as a sidebar, sorry. So let's go once again. And then at the top, you actually have the launch bug report tool. And as soon as you click on it, you have the bug report tool where you can report your bugs on your games, on your software and so on, just... You have several options. If you are having issues, just do this as AMD will receive the bug report and will try to actually fix the bug. So if you just go to the internet, bah, 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 I have so many issues with AMD software, but you don't actually use the bug report tool, then you shouldn't go to the internet on in the first place, okay? Just use the bug report tool before anything else because it's very important, more than most people think. So, on the settings menu, as I was talking about, we have the system, graphics, display, audio and video, hotkeys, accounts, AMD link, just a tab for the AMD link, relieve VR, record and stream, performance and preferences. 
on the system. We have the, the system uh, with the adrenaline version. In this case, like I told you, the 23.3.1. I was actually using the 23.2.2, uh, which I found to be the best uh, for my 7900 XTX. But I'm actually using this in order to show all the available features. As for the status, you have the up-to-date status and you have also the option to check updates. As for here, we have the preferred software version. So the preferred software version, we have recommended only and recommended plus optional. Recommended only, the software will only tell you that there is an update as soon as the update gets past the optional state and goes into recommended. As for the recommended plus optional, in case AMD releases an optional driver, so kind of a, not a beta, but uh, not a recommended one, so in case they release an optional one, the software will tell you that there is indeed an update to the to the optional drivers, okay? Otherwise, if you just have the recommended only, it will just tell you that there is an update as soon as the drivers go from optional to recommended, okay? As for the check for updates, well, it is what it is, I usually leave it on disabled as I don't want anything else uh, messing with my updates. I update when I want to. It's me, Austin! It was me all along, Austin! We also have the snap settings, so allows you to import or export a snapshot of your current settings in the AMD Adrenaline Edition, so, okay. Import slash export a snapshot of your user settings. Okay, it's just a snapshot, not really the settings. I don't really know what this is in particular as I never tested it. So if you know what the snap settings do exactly, leave a comment in the comment section. Then we have the factory reset. So performing a factory reset will reset all settings and profiles in the AMD Adrenaline Edition back to default. Nice, so if you want everything back to default, but you don't want to reinstall your drivers, you just want to reset the, the settings, you can do the factory reset and it restores all user settings and profiles to defaults, which is nice. Then we have reset the game stats. Remember those ones that I told you before that will appear there um, with the averages, with uh, everything there. So resets all currently track the user game statistics, okay, which is nice. So. If you want to reset the the game the game statistics in order to have new data or new data, well, you can do it here. Just perform reset and you're good to go. Then we have the issue reporting. Okay, launches the bug reporting tool for reporting the issues. Report hardware, driver, and software issues. Okay, the one here on the top as well on the on the right top corner. Then we have the issue detection. Automatically launches bug report tool when issues such as BSOD, TDR or device installation errors are detected. And since I don't want to make automatic bug uh, report tools because I just don't, I just don't. I don't want the software to, to make things automatically. I want to do everything when I want and if I want to. So I disable it. If I have any particular issues, I go to the bug report tool and I report them myself. Uh, and then we have the about AMD software adrenaline edition that you can open and this menu will open. Copyright 2023 advanced micro devices, which is what AMD means by the way. All rights reserved, by the way, the software uses libraries from the FFMPEG project under the LGPL V. 2.1. On the hardware and, and drivers, we actually have the GPU that you're using, the VRAM, GDDR6, 2500 MHz, okay, that seems to be my mother. Then if you go to the hardware details, you have several things like the graphics that you're using, basically you have the details of your hardware, you have the graphics manufacturer, then you have the usable memory size, once again, core clock, memory type, memory clock, memory bitrate, total memory bandwidth, so if you don't really know the bandwidth of your GPU, you have it here, 960 gigabytes per second, okay, that's very, very good, almost one terabyte, this is crazy, the device ID, and so on, so on, so on, uh, then you can go, also you can go into the current bus settings, okay, PCI Express 4, using PCI Express 4, 16 lanes, you can go also in the software and driver details, so you have everything that you have that you need to know here so that the x api version 12.2 vulkan api opencl opengl direct 3d you have everything that you that you have here so related to the hardware but software side that you have everything here so even the amd windows driver version it is here you can access everything you want in the software your windows version it is all here okay 
So AMD actually uh, allows you to, to see lots of details. And if you go into the CPU, it is exactly the same. We have the model, the processor, the cores, the threads, and the RAM, okay? So as for the graphics menu, we actually have the graphics profile. We have several of those, actually. We have the gaming profile, the eSports profile, the power saving one, and the standard. And when you actually install the drivers for the first time, they will ask you if you want to keep one of these profiles or if you just go, if you want to just go with the standard one. And they, I, I really advise you to go with the standard one and then configure every setting as you wish. Because enabling the gaming, esports, or power saving options, or the gaming profiles, the graphics profiles, as you want to call them, uh, will actually enable or disable um, specific settings that may not be uh, what you actually want to use. Let's start with the Radeon Super Resolution. Basically, Radeon Super Resolution is an in-driver upscaling feature powered by AMD Fidelity FX Super Resolution, FSR. Users can now take advantage of Radeon Super Resolution to unleash new levels of performance on any game that runs in exclusive full-screen modes. Uh, this feature will be inactive until the user sets, it, sets up in-game resolution lower than the monitor's native resolution, and Radeon Super Resolution will automatically detect the resolution, cha the resolution change sorry, and upscale to the native monitor's resolution, delivering extra performance for gamers to enjoy. Okay, first of all, it is using FSR 1.1, it does not use FSR 2.0 or 2.1 or 2.2, because... Uh, it is actually way harder to do and this works in almost every game and in order for it to work in every game It needs to have a spatial upscaling technology and FSR 2 uh, The LSS 2 the LSS 3 and so on they use temporal upscaling technologies in instead of spatial the temporal upscaling technologies are better They will bring you higher quality, but at the same time um, They are way way harder to implement so in order for this to work in every single game they have to use spatial upscaling instead of temporal because if they wanted to actually use uh, fsr2 algorithm in the radiant super resolution the game would add, would definitely need to have taa for example um and it would be to, it would need to be trained the algorithm uh, the same way they do with fsr the way to make it work is to simply enable it so you go here, enable the Radeon Super Resolution, you have the sharpen effect as well. Go to your to your game, for example, your resolution is 1440p. Just enter your game, reduce the resolution to 1080p, and Radeon Super Resolution will automatically kick in and upscale to 1440p, which is your monitor's native resolution, okay? If you go down and reduce the resolution to 720p, the Radeon Super Resolution will automatically uh, upscale from 720p to 1440p, which once again is your resolution. So then you can select the sharpen effect. The lower your, your resolution selected in game, the more sharpen effect you will need because, well, uh, the pixels will be less to upscale from and it will look way blurrier, blurrier, if that's a word, than it should. So you need more sharpen effect, okay? Let's disable it. Then you have the Radian anti-lag. As AMD says, dynamically adjusts frame timing to reduce the lag between the user inputs and visual responses. I did believe that Radeon Anti-Lag was a gimmick, but it isn't. And I'm not saying that you will notice any difference in terms of real input lag unless you have a really, really bad monitor, a really, really bad mouse, uh, or something wrong with your system, because you won't. But you will definitely, and I, and I repeat, you will definitely use the Radeon Anti-Lag in some scenarios. For example, in Crisis remastered using the, the Ray Tracing settings, or for example, in The Witcher 3 when using the, race, the Ray Tracing settings, using the Radeon Anti-Lag will actually improve the frame timings a lot, so the performance will be much better with the Radeon Anti-Lag enabled, as it will actually, as AMD says, dynamically adjusts the, the frame timing to reduce the lag between user inputs and visual responses. So the frame timeline is much better, the gameplay is much smoother on both Crysis and The Witcher 3 when using Radeon Anti-Lag. So it's, it's a big plus in my opinion, no doubts here. Yes, exactly, exactly. As for the Radeon Chill, to conserve power and reduce heat, Radeon Chill's Radiant Shield, sorry, reduces the frame rate when the user is idle and instantly ramps it up when the action picks up. Now, 
In my opinion, I never use the minimum FPS and the max FPS option because for me, it for me personally, it just doesn't make much sense. But, and I repeat, but, uh, for people um, that just want to use Radiant Chill as a frame limiter, what you have to do is just go there, for example, and use the minimum and max FPS uh, with the same exact value. So, uh, minimum 90, for example, and max FPS 90. If you want to limit your FPS at 90, if you want to limit your FPS at 60, just go 60 and 60. And I'm telling you this because Radiant Chill actually uses the same technology as the Radiant Anti-Lag, so if you use Radiant Chill as a frame limiter, you'll have way less lag than using, for example, frame rate target control or any other technology because it uses, once again, the same, techno the same technology as Radiant Chill. That's why that if you enable Radiant Anti-Lag, you can't actually enable Radiant Chill. When you enable one, you disable the other automatically because they use the same technology. So, if you want to lock your FPS, let's say if you have a FreeSync monitor, let's say 144 hertz, uh, what you want to do is to go and lock your FPS to 141 with a minimum and max at 141. It will serve as a very, very low latency uh, frame limiter and you want to use 3 FPS lower than your refresh rate in order to avoid those same frame fluctuations that can actually cause you screen tearing. If you enable, you can use, for example, 144, 144, no issues. But as soon as you do this, well, uh, you can you can actually have some frame fluctuations, and sometimes you'll be, let's say, at 146 or 145 FPS, which will go over uh, your FreeSync uh, limit and will make you have screen tearing. So you want to have a, safe, a stable, uh, let's say, a, a safe net of 3 Hz slash 3 FPS in order to avoid those fluctuations and still be inside your frame limit or your Hz limiter of the FreeSync, okay? So this is the best thing you can get. For example, if you have a 75 Hz monitor, just lock it to 72 and you'll avoid the frame fluctuations as well to uh, you'll avoid the frames to go over your frame limit uh, and cause you tearing. Now, a real gimmick is actually this one, the Radiant Boost. This is a real gimmick. Dynamically reduces resolution during motion to improve performance, with little perceptible impact on image quality. Only works in supported games. For best results, set the game's render scale option to 100%. Now, this is an interesting one, and like I told you before, for me, this is just a gimmick. What this will do, basically, as it says here, movement-based dynamic resolution is, when you, are, you, when you are actually sitting there, just there, for example, your, your, character, your character is, like, static, the, the base resolution that you'll have, the render resolution will be 100% of your monitor. When you start moving, the render resolution will lower. Since you are moving, you don't actually notice that much of details, okay? So you don't notice much details because, once again, the faster you're moving, the less details you notice on the sides of the monitor, on the sides of the screen, and so on. So what the, the Raiden Boost does is... The faster you're moving, the lower the render resolution you, you will be. So if you're moving really, really fast, the render resolution will, uh, will actually reduce to half your native resolution. As soon as you stop, as soon as you stop your character, the render resolution will go up to 100% as well. But this is, this is not great, as you can definitely, definitely notice the difference when you're moving. Even if you select, let's say, 83.3%, you, you can actually see the difference in terms of quality as, you, as you're moving. It just looks way worse for me. It's a gimmick. Even more now that we actually have FSR, RSR, uh, FSR 2, 2.1, 2.2, so... With the upscaling technologies that we have now, Radiant Boost is just death in the water. Just isn't worth it anymore at all. Now, okay, let's disable it. Let's go to the Radiant Image Sharpening. Adds clarity to in-game visuals and select productivity and media applications. Enhances visual detail. So once again, you can just enable visual sharpening, the, the image sharpening from AMD. You can select the sharpness from 10 to 100%, and what this does is basically what it says it does. It sharpens your image. Now, I, I do believe that the Radiant Image Sharpening actually works in, in videos as well, and web pages and so on, but at least for gaming, uh, it does it jo its job very well, and it does its job 
even um, even better if you are just going into some games with bare, very, very blurred TA implementation, like, for example, Red Dead Redemption 2, although you have an in-game sharpness, um, sharpness feature, uh, so you can actually choose the sharpness of the TAA, but overall, if the game really is or feels blurred and you don't have that TAA slider, that TAA sharpness slider inside the game, you can use Radiant Image Sharpening to actually overwrite those settings and make the game look sharper, okay? Or at least sharper for to your needs. Some people like sharper images, some don't, so it is what it is. For me, I don't really use it as most games have the, the sharpening options inside the game, but if they don't, it's good to, to know that you have actually the image sharpening on your software. Then we have the Radiant Enhanced Sync, an alternative V-Sync mode that minimizes visual tearing and lag but doesn't limit frame rates. Works with both free sync and fixed refresh rate, uh, fix, fixed refresh displays, okay? I can tell you right away that I tested the, um, the Enhanced Sync option on my 75Hz monitor there and it, it is better than the V-Sync. You, you notice almost no no visual tearing, okay, no visual tearing, um, and the, the input latency is just so much lower than when using VSync. If you have FreeSync, use FreeSync, and you don't need to use the Enhanced Sync unless you want to go over your FreeSync range. Let's say that, for example, your monitor is 144 Hz. I still advise you to, to limit the frame rates at 141, but if you want to go over that, you can actually use FreeSync, keep FreeSync enabled, and use Enhanced Sync at the same time. But if you, if you, for example, don't have FreeSync, uh, you can just use Enhanced Sync instead of FreeSync. You use, let's say you have a, a 75 Hz monitor, but you don't have FreeSync. You enable the Radiant en Enhanced Sync, then go here and lock the frame rates to 75. If you have an, a 144 Hz monitor, but once again, you don't have FreeSync because some older monitors did have 144 Hz, but did not have FreeSync, you do the same process. You go enable the enhanced sync and choose your monitor's refresh rate 144. The, the mixture of Radiant Chill and enhanced sync is the way to go if, and mostly, if you don't have FreeSync. It's just the way to go. Then you have the wait for vertical refresh rate. So vertical refresh sync or v-sync synch synchronizes the transition of new frames, blah, blah, blah. So if you don't want to have screen tearing, you can actually force this, but it isn't usually used as you have, once again, enhanced sync and you have free sync. As for the advanced settings, we have the frame rate target control that I was talking about before. Limit your peak FPS to a steady rate. Limits your peak frame rate to a given rate. Unlike Radiant Chill, frame rate target control doesn't have a lower FPS target that senses motion and it may provide steadier frame rates overall. Frame rate target control also may have some input lag. Not also and not may, it definitely has input latency, but at the same time, like it says here, it is much steadier uh, than, than Radiant Chill. For example, in some scenarios, Radiant Chill actually may may still deliver some, and I repeat, in some scenarios, Radiant Chill may still deliver some screen tearing, mostly in the bottom of the monitor. Something that the frame rate target control will actually fix. So if you're using Radiant Chill, but you still feel like you're still having some screen tearing, just use the frame rate target control instead, just enable it, limit the FPS you want, once again, 141, if you have a 144 Hz monitor, and you're good to go. But like I told you before, um, it has way, way steadier frame rates, but at the same time, uh, it adds input latency. So if Radiant Chill is working fine for you with no screen tearing, just use it. If Radiant Chill in some scenarios has the screen tearing that we're talking about, mostly in the bottom of the monitor, then use frame rate target control as it will fix your issue. Once again, then we have the anti-aliasing settings. Anti-aliasing smooths object edges to reduce stair step, blah, 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 artifacts or jaggies at the cost of some performance. Specifies how the driver interacts with anti-aliasing settings in the game only affects DirectX 9 applications. So once again, these settings that you have here only serve for the X9 applications. So it works, for example, um, let's say in CSGO. 
Anti-aliasing method once again only works for the X9 applications. You can use, you can choose multi-sampling, multi sorry, adaptive multi-sampling or super sampling. Then you have the morphological anti-aliasing, an alternative edge smoothing technique with minimal performance overhead. Does not affect DirectX 12 and Vulkan applications. So it does not work with the X12 or Vulkan, but it does work with the X11 and the X10, which is very nice. So if you want a little more of anti-aliasing on your older game, you can choose this, uh, which is actually nice. Then you, you have the anisotropic filtering. Anisotropic filtering improves texture clarity with minimizing visual noise or sparkle. Once again, only affects the X9 applications. This is mostly these settings are mostly for older games, so because the newer games actually have these settings in game and you don't need these at all. This these are just for older applications, once again. Then you have, once again, the texture filtering quality. Controls the optimization point of texture filtering. Standard is the typically the best mix of even of image quality, sorry, and performance. Only affects the X9 applications. You have the standard, the high, and the performance. Surface format optimization. Allows the driver to override the application and choose a more optimal texture format to improve performance. Typically has a minimal impact on image quality. Then we have the tessellation, which is a really interesting option. Tessellation option on drivers. Specifies how the driver interacts with tessellation settings in the game. Now, this is very interesting once again. And you have the AMD optimized settings, the use application settings, and the override application settings. Now, usually you, you actually have the AMD optimized settings, but... But for some really old GPUs, like for example the RX 570, 580, or the, even the Vega cards, because after the RX, 7, uh, the RX 5000 series, uh, AMD GPUs actually uh, handle tessellation way better than the previous ones. So if you are actually using a GCN GPU, because the RX 5000 series are already RDNA, once again Vega, RX 500 and 400 series, or lower than that, you can actually go here and choose override application settings. Go there and go, for example, with the maximum tessellation level of, let's say, 8, 6 or 4 times. And this, in some games with lots, uh, lots of heavy tessellation, this will help the performance a lot. For example, games like Assassin's Creed Origins, Assassin's Creed, uh, even, for example, Assassin's Creed Odyssey or, for example, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, it will definitely, oh, it's for me, it will definitely help in terms of performance, okay? It will limit the maximum tessellation level and s s because of those games that have a way, way over the top tessellation level uh, and older AMD GPUs don't work well with those tessellation levels, well... Um, this will make the performance better because you're actually limiting the maximum tessellation level. Then we have the OpenGL triple buffering, which only works on OpenGL, obviously, and an alternative vSync mode exclusively for OpenGL applications. I don't really know what it, what it does, actually, so it triples the buffer. I don't really know, sorry about that. Then we have the 10-bit pixel format. Enables 10-bit OpenGL buffer support for compatible displays and 10-bit aware OpenGL applications. This feature is not compatible with HDR display cap capability. But yeah, the other feature is not compatible with HDR, so you can only use this feature with SDR, so normal displays. Um, and it seems that it, it just uses the buffer from OpenGL to use the 10-bit pixel format, it seems. Uh, I tested it before, uh, sometimes I actually had some bugs, it, it actually stutters a bit, even in the desktop, so it skips frames and it just doesn't feel anything different, so I would leave it off unless uh, you actually need or you actually want to test it. Overall, doesn't make any difference, at least for me, in my two or three monitors. Then we have the Reset Shader Cache, which basically resets the shader cache, clears the contents of disk-based shader cache, okay? You just click here and it will reset your shader cache. Remember those stutters that, that you actually have when playing some DX11 games, like for example God of War, those stutters that you have, um, let's say, in the first minutes and then the game runs smoothly, that's when the game is actually loading the shader cache. It will load the shader cache in order to, uh, to have those shaders already 
loaded for the game to run smoothly instead of loading them as the game moves on okay that's what the shader cache is basically it's made to improve smoothness and if you have any issues there lots of stutters you can actually go there and reset the the shader cache now we go to the display option where we have the amd free sync technology provides smooth responsive gameplay by updating the display as new frames become available requires an amd free sync compatible display requires uh, an NVIDIA card, Intel card or AMD card because FreeSync wor Free works on any, any card. Now we have the virtual super resolution, allows application to render at resolutions higher than the display's native pixel grid and then scales the image down to fit the display, produces higher quality visuals at the expense of performance. Choose a higher than native resolution in application to take advantage of VSR. So, using FSR, uh, using the LSS, you are upscaling the image, so you are rendering a lower image uh, image quality than your monitor's native resolution. For example, it uses a 1080p resolution and then upscales to 1440p to make it look as close to 1440p as possible. While FSR and the LSS make the image fidelity a bit lower but with way, way higher FPS, VSR actually makes the image fidelity way, way higher but with lower FPS. So it's the opposite, different situations but one upscales and the other downscales. Then we have the GPU scaling option. When enabled, the GPU will scale up lower resolutions to fit the display. When not enabled, displays typically handle scaling themselves. With the GPU scaling, you can actually choose the preserve aspect ratio, full panel or center. Let's say that you're playing at 1440p in a 1440p ultrawide monitor. If you choose the preserve aspect ratio when enabling the GPU scaling, it will, it will actually show you the, um, the black bars on the sides, okay? On the both sides, you'll have black bars. If you choose, for example, the full panel, it will stretch the resolution fully to the panel. And if you choose the center, let's say that you're playing at 1080p, for example, on a 1440p ultrawide monitor, you'll have black bars on the top, on the bottom, on the left and on the right because it will just use the pixels of the resolution and 1080p will be centered. Then we have a new option that was introduced like one year ago, it's not new but one year ago, which is the integer scaling. Gives a crisp pixelated look to images scaled up to fit the display. Images that can't be scaled to match the display's exact size and shape will be centered on the screen. And this was at least marketed as, uh, as something for older games, let's say for, for example games like Warcraft 3. These integer scaling options can actually make, or this scaling option can actually make your game look much better uh, and that's what actually AMD advertises. It's mostly for older games or retro games, okay? And it helps. It helps in those games. Then we have the color depth, chooses the color format uh, to be used in your display. The higher you have, the higher you should use. I'm using only 8 bits because the monitor supports 10 bits, but since I'm using the overclocked settings at 160 Hz, it just supports 8. If I use 144, I can use 10. If I use 160, I can only use 8. Then we have another option called Display Color Enhancement, built-in profiles for your display that improves and enhances the game and application color vibrancy. You have the Disabled and you have the Vivid Gaming. As soon as you enable the Vivid Gaming, the, the saturation and some other options just, just change and the overall image quality is much different. Well, I don't really know if you can see it, uh, but it, it actually changes most likely the saturation. The saturation changes just a lot. Maybe for some people, once again, some competitive CSGO players that have to distinct the colors of the player and the background more, this can actually help. Although Nvidia has way more of these way more. Then we have the display specs, once again, total, horizontal, vertical display, the front porch, sync width, polarity and so on, interlaced or progressive, you have even the current link settings of your connection, in this case it's display port, free sync range 48 to 160 and so on, you have everything here. Then we, are, we have once again the custom colors, instead of using the display color enhancement, you can actually use the custom color settings, you can, use the, you can choose the color temperature control, you can choose the color temperature itself, brightness, UE, contrast, saturation and so on. So if you want more saturation to use your game settings differently or to be more competitive, you can just use it and will change, yeah, it will change the saturation and other options, okay? That's what it is. And 
You also have the color deficiency correction, accessibility mode that allows tweaking of colors for users who experience varying levels of color vision defe deficiency. Sorry. So you have protonopia, deutronopia, and tritonopia. And then we have the, the usual overrides and the usual custom resolutions that you can do. So you can actually um, do custom resolutions. You can just go here, accept, accept and then you can actually create new resolutions. You can just go here, create the resolution you want, for example, 1440p, 60 hertz, let's just say this, you can go here, CVT, and then, bam, add the manual resolution, it is done. And yeah, you can also choose the HDCP, control support for high bandwidth digital content protection standard. So, that's basically it. As for the audio and video, you have the AMD noise suppression, now something that wasn't presented on the 22, 2022 video that I made. Uh, you can enable the, the AMD noise suppression, you have the input device and so on. If you want to actually know how the noise suppression works, uh, you can just watch this video passing right now on the screen where I actually tested the noise suppression when it came out. That's all you need. Um, to actually know what noise suppression does and how it works. Then you have the video profiles, once again, you have the default, as we chose the default, we have the, the Cinema Classic, Enhanced, Home Video, Outdoor, Sports, Vivid and Custom. Once again, this lets you choose the, the custom brightness, the colors and so on, okay? Each different video profile has different colors, different saturation and so on, something that you can actually change on the display tab that I've shown you before. Then we have the hotkeys, where you can actually change the hotkeys for several, uh, for several, for several options, let's say that, for several options like the switch default, the toggle radiant super resolution, so if you're in game you, you can just press alt plus u and radiant super resolution will kick in and you can change all the hotkeys and shortcuts that you want. Even for the recording you have this, the control shift e but you can just choose another one I will choose the same, control shift e and it will just work as it should, okay? It's basically that where you can change your hotkeys. Then we have the accounts where you can actually um, kind of connect your AMD Adrenaline software to your Facebook, to Restream, Stage 10, Cine. You can just connect your AMD Adrenaline software in order to make a better streaming, okay? It will stream better. Uh, it will be easier. Just connect your account, go to the streaming options that I'll show you later, and it is done. Then we have the AMD, AMD link option, but I don't have the AMD link installed, so it won't show anything. We have the Relieve VR, once again, you have to install Steam VR in order to use the Relieve VR. And then we have the record and stream options. Now, as for the software, I usually, uh, this is actually the only menu that I've changed. Uh, before actually uh, recording the video or actually showing you the options on the, on the software. I usually use the record desktop option if, you have, if I want to record desktop, I'm currently actually using OBS to do it. Then we have the option of show the indicator, which will show the indicator when you're recording, the, the time for example. Then we have the borderless region capture, allows Windows regions to be recorded. Then we have the recording profile where we have some, the medium, high and custom, I usually use the custom. And as for the recording, I advise you to use 60 FPS, obviously. And as for the video bitrate, I advise you to use at least 40 MBS, MBPS. So these, this option, the video bitrate is what actually will improve or decrease your video quality. The higher the value is here, 60, 70, doesn't really matter. The higher the value, the higher the video quality, okay? Resolution means absolutely nothing without the video bitrate. So I do advise you to use at least 40, but if you can use 50 or 60. I usually now use 50, in the past I, I tended to use 40, but I now use 50 for a higher video quality. Then you have the audio bitrate, which works exactly the same. The higher the bitrate, the higher the audio quality. As for the video encoding type, we have several ones, and this is one of the things that's new. That's new, not, well, it's not new, it's new for the 7000 series, because they bring another encoder, which is AV1. So now you have AV1, AVC and HEVC. AVC it is the H.264 encoder uh, that AMD uses, the AVC, and the HEVC is actually the, the H.265, which is better. In terms of quality, 
it starts with AVC, then goes to AGVC, then goes to AV1. In terms of quality, once again, AV1 is the best one. But at least for now, I do advise you to use AGVC because in terms of recording and high bit rates, AGVC is really close, if not equal to AV1. And some and all, all the software, all the ed editing softwares and so on will work perfectly fine with, AG with AGVC, but they won't work as good with AV1. So uh, when you are, you are actually reproducing or you are actually rendering uh, with AV1, it will take much longer uh, and it will also stutter in some video playbacks in some video playback in some softwares. Filmora is one of them. So AGVC is the way to go if you don't have any issues. If you want the maximum the maximum uh, quality that you can get, use AV1 video encoding, okay? As for the audio channels, it's basically automatic or stereo. Then you have the option to separate the microphone tracks. So if you want to separate the track in order to, to have video and audio separated, you can do it. You have the record microphone option once again which is disabled, then you can select the microphone level, the push to talk option, audio boost, low, high or off. As for the live streaming options, we have the low, medium, high, ultra, custom and adaptive. Uh, and these will change the, the things that you have here. For example, if you push ultra, the resolution, the FPS, the video bit rate will also increase. Now, take in consideration this. Um, the resolution, you want the resolution usually, you want the resolution that your monitor has, okay? Usually. But for example, if you're streaming to, to YouTube, uh, you want 1080p or 1440p because at 4K, some in some scenarios, you may actually have uh, frame drops and, and the performance overall will be much lower in your computer because you are actually streaming at 4K. But you can do it. No issues overall, no issues. As for the FPS, you have 30 and 60. Usually, even more if you're gaming, just go for 60. It's, it's common sense. And now we have once again the video bitrate. And as I told you before, the video bitrate is the most important thing because when choosing the bitrate, you're actually choosing the, the overall video quality. The higher the video bitrate, the higher the overall quality. Now, depending on the resolution, your video bitrate has to be higher. The higher the resolution, the higher the video bitrate. For example, if you're upscaling at 1080p, the video bitrate at, let's say, uh, 10 Mbps will be completely fine. And this is where the encoders actually kick in. The better the encoder, the better quality it will give you at a lower video bitrate. Okay, that's the difference. So AV1 will give you much better quality at, let's say, 10 Mbps than the AVC encoder. And that's the real and the real big difference, okay? Because at really at let's say 50 Mbps, at 40 Mbps, the quality of the three codecs will be more or less the same. AV1 will still be better, of course, and AGVC will still be better than AVC. But it is at lower bit rates where it actually makes the difference, okay? The thing is that some streaming services won't really go over, let's say, 10 or 8, so... Well, I would still push things to at least 20 MB Mbps and if the streaming service actually wants to, um, to tone down the, um, the quality because they will, they will, uh, it's still better to have a toned down quality from 20 Mbps than from 10 Mbps. If you know what I mean. As for the audio quality, just go for the maximum 192 kappa bytes, um, k bytes, and it will work fine. Now we have this option as well: the enhanced filtering improves AVC encoding quality under certain scenarios. May have an impact on gaming performance. Now this because the the streaming the streaming codec that you have here is actually AVC. You can select AGVC, and at least for now, I do believe that on the AMD software you can't use AV1 to stream. Not yet. You can use in other softwares like, for example, OBS, Streamlabs OBS, but on the Radeon kit, you can't still do it. Uh, but you do have the, the enhanced filtering option that you can enable, and the AVC uh, video quality, at least in streaming, will be much better than the usual that you have, okay? So if you are streaming and you want the maximum uh, quality possible on your AMD card, don't forget, enable the enhanced filtering. This, if you're streaming with the AMD uh, software kit, of course. Then you have the archive stream. Basically, you can select no or yes, so you can stream and record at the same time, or you can just stream. Okay, that's how things work. Then you have the media location, where you choose where you, you where your recording files will 
uh, will be basically. Then you have the option of the instant replay that allows you to instantly save a video of a predefined duration of your last gaming moment. You can select enabled or not. You can choose, for example, the, the replay duration when you're actually... Um, when the software actually catches the moment, you can select the duration of the of the replay, and you can also select system memory or disk storage, uh, which is actually nice. So if you have a lot of RAM, you can use system memory and the buffer will be much, much better. Basically, that's it. Also, we have the instant GIF option, allows you to instantly save an animated GIF of a predefined duration of your last gaming moment. Basically the same as the instant replay, but instead of doing it in a video, you're doing it in a GIF. Then you have the in-game replay, while in-game allows you to instantly play, play back a video of your last gaming moment. Once again, you can enable it, you can select the duration, once again, maximum of 30 seconds. The in-game replay size, in terms of the window, I believe, small, medium, large and custom. And cu yes, it's the window size as you can select the pixels. And then you have the position, top left, top right, bottom, blah, blah, blah. You can select all these, which is nice. Um, then you have the audio capture device, you can select the analog, microphone, uh, this because I have lots of them, so you can select your headset, basically your audio capture device, your microphone. And then you can select also a video capture device, in the, in the case of, of being live streaming, or in the case that you actually want to record your camera together with your, with your gameplay uh, in the AMD Adrenaline software kit, okay? Now, as for the performance, we have the sampling interval if you actually want to record the metrics, so instead of using MS Afterburner to record the, the FPS, the, fluctu the fluctuations and the frame timing and so on, you can actually use the, the AMD software kit uh, and you can actually choose the sampling interval. If you use it, I would select one, one second. Then you have the option to either the metrics overlay du during logging. You have the... Um, the save location of your logging, so of your FPS countings and so on. And on the preferences, well, we have VR streaming, we have general, uh, and on VR streaming, once again, you need to have Steam VR. On the general, we have the in-game overlay, which I advise to live on because it is used um, for you to see the, the recording, for, use the, for you to use the recording feature and so on. Then we have the web browser, which I always disable. The system tray menu is also important for the, um, for the icon to appear on your taskbar, so that's, that's enabled. Advertisements. AMD actually allows you to disable the advertisements, which is, which is great, actually, which is a thing that not many companies do, so you can disable the advertisements. As for the toast notifications, they are... When you're running a game, if you have the toast notifications enabled, the, um, a little square will, will appear on the right top corner and will tell you if you have Radiant Chill enabled for that game, if you have, for example, Radiant Boost and so on, it will tell you the things that are enabled or not in that particular game, which is a very, very nice feature, okay? So, leave it on. As for the language, English, even for me, that I'm Portuguese, Always on top, disabled, because I don't like that. The sidebar position can be chosen as well, left side or right side. As for the animations and effects, I usually disable them. And then the AMD user, user, <laughs> user experience program, okay? Learn more, join, blah, blah, blah. Now let's go finally to the gaming. You have the, the games you have in your computer, or, or at least most of them. And the only thing that you have here is that it will show the average FPS of your of your gameplays in those particular games. Photoshop, I love playing Photoshop. It's one of the best games ever made. And it still gets sequels. It still gets sequels. That's how good it is. Anyway, Apex Legends, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and so on. The thing is, when you you when you choose a game, uh, you can actually you can actually select settings per game. So the settings that we've seen before, radiant super resolution, anti lag, chill, image sharpening, and so on. Once you go to the gaming tab and select the game, you can choose those settings per game. For example, Cyberpunk is way heavier than let's say Apex Legends. So for Cyberpunk, you may actually want to limit your FPS lower than you do in Apex Legends, and that's why the gaming profiles matter. Okay. Now, as for record and stream, uh, it's basically the, the settings that we have for recording and streaming on our, our uh, AMD software, okay? So, if you want to, to record and stream, these are the settings that you have to do. So, you have microphone levels, cameras, and so on. You have the live, the live stream options, uh, the scene editor, where you actually choose the, the things that you want to show. So, as you can see, camera, 
can choose the camera, chat overlay as well, so you can make it higher, bigger or smaller as, as you choose, the indicator as well, it shows the, the, the time that you've been recording for, uh, the timer or not, you can on or off location as well, you can choose the locations of, of the of the indicator, the camera as well, the opacity, several things, so you can choose everything about your streaming and recording settings here uh, in the scene editor on the record and stream tab, okay? Then you have the media, which is basically the media that you have, the recordings and everything else. Everything just works. Everything just works. Everything just works. It just works. Everything just works. As for the performance, uh, on the performance tab, we have another three tabs with the metrics, tuning and advisors. As for the metrics, if you do want to use um, the, the AMD Radeon metrics, keep these enabled. As for me, I use MS Afterburner, so disable these at all, because I don't really need them. Then let's go to the tuning tab, is where you actually have your tuning options, so your overclockings, your undervoltings and so on, that you can see on my channel as well, because I have lots of how to overclock and undervolt videos for almost all AMD cards, at least from the from the 500 series and above, I have lots of overclocking videos. So you can select also the global tuning or you can select here the global tuning, but you can also have game profiles and you can select different overclocks per game. So if, for example, once again, uh, Cyberpunk is way heavier than, let's say, Apex Legends. So for Apex Legends, you can actually select just undervolting, while for, for example, Cyberpunk, you may want to choose overclocking, okay? So you can do, in fact, overclocking, different overclockings and undervoltings for different games, which is also nice. And as for the advisors, well, it is what it is, game advisor, play a game for a while and come back here to see a performance assessment with suggested tweaks. Basically, the software will tell you how to improve or not your game performance. Everything said and done and it, it was like over one hour of recording. So if you're actually watching the video and the video is, let's say, one hour or less, well, a lot of cuts have been made. Thanks a lot for watching, basically that's it, if you have any doubts, any doubts, leave them on the comment section and as always I will answer as fast as I can. Uh, I believe I showed you what every setting does uh, from all tabs in all the AMD Adrenaline software, home, gaming, record and stream, settings, everything was shown. So once again, if you have any doubts, leave them in the comment section and I will answer as fast as I can. By the way, if you watched all the video, leave a comment in the comment section and let me know that you watched all the video because you are a crazy Crazy! You are a crazy person. You are a crazy person if you actually watched like one hour uh, of some random guy um, telling you what AMD Adrenaline settings do. So, yeah, that's that's insane. Once again, thanks a lot for watching. Any doubts, comment section, and see you in the next video, guys. Thank you very much.